The midterm elections are seven months away, and Republicans are making a strong effort to take back the majority. Now they're attracting candidates that may change the makeup of the GOP. Jennifer Wishon explains. It's 7 o'clock on a Monday night at this Maryland community center. More chairs are needed for the crowd gathered to see and hear Charles Lawler. At first glance, you may assume he's a Democrat, but Lawler is a Republican running for Congress. Now, I don't know what you were expecting to hear tonight. The Marine Corps major turned businessman is conservative to the core and taking on the second most powerful Democrat in the House of Representatives. Some people would say you'd have a better chance of taking your family and moving to another district <laughs> and running somewhere else than to yeah. run against the majority leader. Yeah, I've heard that. I hear that often, early and often. Lawler says a deployment to Kosovo helped him fully appreciate the freedoms Americans enjoy. And just as he felt drawn to serve his country, Lawler feels called to run against those he says are steering America off track. The policies of socialism, the policies that say government should get involved with competition when that's not government's role, the policies that extend government and makes it overwhelming with a tax burden where every 38 cents of your dollar goes to state, federal or local government, where you're only getting 62 cents of a dollar you earned. There's something wrong with that. And if we keep going down the road we're going, financially, we'll only have what I think it's uh, 53 to 54 cents of every dollar we make with this health care bill intact. We're getting closer and closer to slavery. It's a fear depicted in this political cartoon that shows the president holding new shackles of socialism. Lawler represents a record number of black conservatives running for Congress this year. According to the Frederick Douglass Foundation, there are 30 candidates in 16 states running for either the Senate or House of Representatives. It's a surge of black Republican activism that America hasn't seen since Reconstruction. It's already seen as a political awakening among black voters, and just one win among the candidates would make a huge splash here on Capitol Hill. Of the 177 Republicans in the House and 41 in the Senate, not one is of African descent. And at least some of the credit for this movement goes to a Democrat. President Obama and the idea that a black man is president, I think, has encouraged lots of black people across the political spectrum uh, because they think, you know what, you can break through some barriers, you can have success. The second thing is, Michael Steele. Uh, you have a black man as chairman of the Republican Party. And although Michael Steele is often controversial, conservative Ron Miller says Steele is making an impact on the black community. I think that his presence has uh, encouraged people, it has emboldened people, and I just hope that that continues on. Actor and author Joseph C. Phillips believes the Republican Party has always been a natural fit for blacks. Conservative principles, he points out, were the foundation of the civil rights movement. Who is a more idealistic people, American people, than black people in America? We truly, truly believe in the ideas articulated in the Declaration of Independence. Equality under the law and a limited government that uh, uh, secures equal right to life, liberty, and property. African Americans are churchgoers, and on social issues like gay marriage and abortion, blacks tend to be more conservative. I always tell my mother, who, when she asked me why I'm a Republican, I said, it's because you raised me that way. You know, when I got old enough to make my own decisions, I started comparing what I believed to the Democratic Party platform, and I found no alignment whatsoever. But life as a black conservative can be lonely. They still face pockets of racism among whites, and those who associate with the Tea Party movement face criticism from liberals. You actually have been called a racist, is that correct? Yes, I have, which is actually kind of funny, you know, when you think about it. I, I use the one-liner in my speeches. How could I be a racist? My wife is black. Republican leaders know they have a problem attracting minorities, and they're focused on changing that. And in my judgment, there, there may be no higher priority uh, for Republicans in the 21st century uh, than to return to that uh, Abraham Lincoln, Jack Kemp vision that at the very center of everything that we are as Republicans is the the, the principle of equality of opportunity. Ken Blackwell of the Family Research Council argues the GOP should widen its tent, but not at the expense of its principles. We are the party of job creation and opportunity, and we believe in a meritorious society where individuals deserve a place at the starting line with no guarantees of how they're going to finish the race.
Meanwhile, back in Maryland, Charles Lawler's campaign is compared to David versus Goliath. If he makes it through Collins Bailey in the Republican primary, he'll face House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, who won his reelection bid in 2008 with 73 percent of the vote. President Obama won the district with 68 percent of the vote. But no matter how it turns out, Lawler predicts Americans will see more black Republicans running for office on all levels in the coming years. It's time for us to reach across aisles, be uncomfortable and reach across race lines. It's time for us to rebuild our country from the inside back out. It's a change many black conservatives believe in. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Fascinating story, but you, you look at you look at the historical roots here. Here are the party of Lincoln, the Republican Party that um, liberated um, the Emancipation Proclamation was a Republican concept. Uh, but then here we are, um, 150 years later, and the Republican Party is is not a a party uh, that it is anyway identified with minorities. It it is kind of stunning. Uh, now, what were the historical roots of it? Well, you can go back to the Great Depres Depression, what Roosevelt did, and then um, what Lyndon Johnson did with the Great Society and with the Civil Rights Act. Um, that's what did it. And then added to it, you had on the other side Richard Nixon saying a Southern strategy uh, where he was going to specifically appeal to white voters in the South. And uh, now you have it. Um, for me, uh, all you have to do is go look at local meetings of the Republican Party and start counting the minorities until that changes, until you start seeing uh, minorities coming at the local level. You're not going to see change in the Republican Party. And that's what needs to happen. Uh, if you want to reach out across lines, it has to happen at the local level.